Alright, so who went from being a royal ally in Canterbury to a martyred archbishop? Before we answer this, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss any of our videos. Okay, so who was a friend to the king but martyred for the faith? That's St. Thomas Becket. On December 29th, the Catholic Church celebrates the feast of this amazing saint. His story is relevant for our times. He practiced heroic virtue and even gave up his life in defense of the faith. So, what did he really do? And why is he a saint for our times? To answer this, let's look back at a few key moments from his life. St. Thomas Becket was born in England in 1118. He was educated in Paris and later became the clerk of Theobald, the Archbishop of Canterbury. He went on to study canon law and was ordained a deacon. Around this time, Henry II became the King of England. Based on the Archbishop's advice, he appointed Becket as Chancellor. King Henry and Becket soon became great friends and even fought together in war. When Theobald passed away, King Henry immediately appointed Becket to take up the position. Although he initially refused the offer due to fears of creating a rift with the king, he eventually relented and was ordained as a priest and subsequently as a bishop within the following year. At this point, something changed in Becket. He began to take the faith and his role in the church more seriously. He gave up his life of luxury to focus on prayer and penance. Pretty soon, political conflicts began to arise between Becket and King Henry. While King Henry expected him to oblige his demands, Becket, on the other hand, strove to be a faithful shepherd to his people. For example, on one occasion, he refused to accept the bribery system the king had set in place. The issue that eventually led to his martyrdom was the power struggle between the state and the church. He refused to sign what is known as the Constitution of Clarendon. This limited the legal rights of the church while giving more power to the monarchy. What followed was a six-year self-imposed exile to France in 1164 and later the excommunication of three bishops who supported the king. He returned to England in 1170 but it was a move that would prove fatal. On December 2nd, four knights entered the cathedral on King Henry's orders and challenged Becket to submit to the king's will or face death. When he refused, they murdered him on the spot. Even in the face of death, he refused to give in to the king's demands and courageously stood up for the faith. So what can we learn from his life? Our modern world is not too different from St. Thomas's time. Basic truths are rejected and treated as false. There is growing animosity towards authority, the church and the faith. It's becoming harder to live as a Catholic in an increasingly anti-Catholic world. How do we usually respond to this crisis? Often we choose the easy way out, the path of least resistance. Live and let live. As long as we are not harmed or offended, anyone can do anything. There is no desire to live a moral and virtuous life. We compromise on the faith and choose to go along with whatever the culture dictates. At the same time, faithful Catholics face opposition everywhere they go, at their workplaces, their local communities and even among their family and friends. Most of the time to choose to be Catholic is to choose ridicule, rejection, criticism and contempt. And it's not just about being attacked in the world. Seeing the church rocked by scandals, chaos and confusion, many Catholics lose hope. They either leave the church or give up on the faith altogether. How then should we respond as Catholics in the modern world? What we need to survive our times is the virtue of fortitude. Fortitude is one of the four cardinal virtues along with prudence, justice and temperance. While fortitude is commonly translated to mean courage, it also includes perseverance and patience. The Catechism defines fortitude as the moral virtue that provides strength in tough times and steadfastness in doing what is right. Fortitude helps us resist temptations, overcome moral obstacles and face challenges including the fear of death. Fortitude also gives us the courage and strength to undergo trials and persecutions and even be willing to give up our life to defend a just cause. This might seem a bit extreme but it is what the church calls us to do. We must bear witness to Christ with our lives. The word martyr even comes from the Greek word for witness. Martyrdom and fortitude are inseparable. The Catechism states, martyrdom is the supreme witness given to the truth of the faith. It means bearing witness even unto death. The martyr bears witness to Christ who died and rose, to whom he is united by charity. He bears witness to the truth of the faith and of Christian doctrine. He endures death through an act of fortitude. 
An ancient homily written around 7th century AD in Ireland explains three different types of martyrdom that Christians are called to. The first is red martyrdom where like St Thomas Becket and many in the early church a blood is shed in defense of the faith. The second type of martyrdom is green martyrdom where we undergo extreme fasting and penances out of love for God. This is usually done by monks or ascetics and is not meant for everyone. The final type of martyrdom is white martyrdom where we are persecuted for our faith without shedding our blood. This means bodily living out our faith under all circumstances, standing up for justice and truth even in the face of death. This is the ultimate calling for us Christians. As Catholics, we are engaged in war, a spiritual battle for our souls. When the time comes, we too must be willing to sacrifice our lives for the greater good. St Thomas Becket's life is a great example of the fortitude we must possess to deal with the unique challenges of our time. He teaches us to be firm in our faith and persevere in times of trial. Even though he was given great power and authority, he did everything he could to stay true to the faith and give glory to God. He never cowered in fear or went back on his beliefs. Instead, he courageously rose up even against his friend in order to defend the church and God. This is the call of every Catholic to possess fortitude to the extent that we willingly offer up our lives for God and the church. We probably won't be literally killed for our faith, but still we must strive to live in holiness with hearts set on fire for God. And if needed, we must be prepared to take all kinds of great sacrifices in living out our Catholic faith. If you are facing persecution and are on the verge of losing hope, remember St Thomas's quote. Remember the sufferings of Christ, the storms that were weathered, the crown that came from those sufferings which gave new radiance to the faith. All saints give testimony to the truth that without real effort no one ever wins the crown. So, what do you think about this? Do you struggle with the virtue of fortitude? Would you be willing to die for the faith? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, let us know by liking and subscribing to our channel. It really helps us a lot. Until next time. Thank you.